I'm here to tell you if a cicada flies into me, you're going to see me scream. Um, there aren't too many out. Oh, but they're out. You know, we in Virginia get those 17 year cicadas. They come out of the ground after 17 years. Isn't that thoughtful of them? So here's the dress. Here's my little pockets. I'm going to tell you about this trim on my shoulder seams. And it is so cool on this hot day. I debated on what to call my video for my June 2021 Fabric Mart Fabricies to Make. And I think I have settled on the little fabric that could. Or it was going to be Don't Tempt the Sewing Gods. See for yourself what you think. When I received my fabric from Fabric Mart, I was in love. Now let me show you some of it up close here. This is a cotton voile. And voile is a very densely woven, in this case it's 100% cotton. And it's very closely woven, so it results in a silky smooth hand. And it is absolutely perfect for summer because it's lightweight, it breathes, it's semi-sheer. What could be better on a hot day? So I had told Crystal when I was thinking about this fabric that I was going to make a midi length sundress. That was the plan. Well, when I opened the fabric, it said, no, I do not want to be a midi length sundress. I would like to be a little A-line dress so that this fabric could just be fabric forward, front and center, because it's so adorable. Look at that. Those daisies have polka dots on them and a blue center. So I thought, okay, I love A-line dresses. I knew the exact pattern I was going to use, which is New Look 6125 and it even has instructions for lining, which is perfect for voil. So I set to cutting out my fabric. First of all, it washed beautifully, 100% cotton. You just don't have any worries about it. I didn't notice any tremendous amount of shrinking, no color fading. It needed a nice hot press coming out of the dryer. And I chose for my lining a light polyester stretch fabric. So I was a little light on lining fabrics, but I thought I could make that work. Cut my pieces out, started sewing together. I even looked up reviews on Pattern Review because I had never made New Look 6125 before. And if that isn't a straightforward A-line dress, I loved the pockets with the little notches out of them. And so I knew I wanted to put those on. One review said, hey, you don't need the zipper in this dress and you can leave that out. And she said, however, I did forget that you shouldn't sew up the back before attaching it to the lining. Well, that went right by me because I was stuck on, yay, I don't need a zipper. So I'm working on my dress <laughs> and I don't do linings very often, which this has taught me many lessons. First of all, don't avoid doing sewing things that you think are troublesome or frightening because the more you do those kinds of things, the more expertise you're going to have. Well, I always avoid linings, so I have zero expertise with linings. Everything was going along swimmingly. In fact, I thought I was going to be done ahead of time and I had plans in the evening, so I was sewing a little bit under deadline yesterday. It came to the point in the directions where it said, pull your two back pieces through the shoulder seams to turn the dress right side out. Hmm, guess what? 
I didn't have two pieces. I had one piece because I had sewn up the back seam of the lining and I had sewn up the back seam of the voil and not only sewn this part, but serged it as well. So I thought, now, can I pull that through the shoulder seams? Let's find out. I start pulling and pulling and I'm thinking, is this gonna work? Did I read something about this on that review over there? Wait a minute, what is happening? I even started to hear ripping and I was pulling this little voil so hard to get it through these shoulder seams and it wasn't working. I tossed it onto the ironing board. I went over to my laptop to get help, which you never can get help from the internet in a crunch mode when you need it. But I thought, no, I cannot pull this through the shoulder seams because it has been sewn up the back. I'm trying to pull a solid piece through two shoulder seams, not gonna work. So I set out to ripping all the stitches out of the back seam of the lining which was kind of slow going because like I said, it's a thin, stretchy polyester. And then I had to rip them out of the voil. Again, a very delicate fabric. And this fabric was up to the task. I'm telling you what, it was the little fabric that could because the story isn't over yet. I spent a really long time ripping all those seams out then I could pull each side through the shoulder seams and of course sew them right back up again, but at least my dress was now right side out. Finished that up, I thought, okay, full steam ahead. Over to the ironing board to press down here. And the one time, the proverbial one time I don't use the pressing cloth, my iron decides to do this. So how will I fix this awful? There it is. There is the black grease that this iron, Mr. Black and Decker, spit all over my white, only in the white spot, right there on my shoulder seam. I poured straight bleach onto it, didn't move it. I tried scrubbing it with soap, nothing. So my next idea, after fold over elastic, which is actually too thin to cover that up, is going to be this trim. And I think that that will in fact cover that big grease stain. There was some on the inner side too, right here, but it's a lot fainter than that. Well, I called Joy in a tizzy. I texted her and I said, do you know anything that will take grease out? I think it's grease. She said, yes, WD-40 will work. She said, it smells terrible, but you can rinse that part of the dress out. I was a little scared of putting WD-40 on this, but she said, test a scrap, it's going to be fine. Well, I did test a scrap and it seemed fine. I should add here that I, at first I poured straight bleach on it and that didn't do a thing except <laughs> turn the white fabric yellow. Now I used to do that little trick of pouring just a cap full of bleach on the necklines of my baby's clothes and it would take out the spit up stains beautifully and make the, the little outfit pristine again. So I thought, well, maybe that'll work here. It didn't work at all. I did test WD-40 on a sample and that seemed fine. So I put it on the dress, did nothing. So I thought, okay, I am gonna have to do the red trim. I'm just gonna have to. Colin said, do not do that red trim. And I said, I know, I, I could look like I'm five years old, but I have to cover this big black mark. It's right up here at my shoulder. There's no hiding it. So then Brad got back from a bike race that he was in and I told him my tale of woe. And he said, how about if you wash 
the whole dress, put spray and wash on the stain and just run the whole thing through the wash and that's gonna take care of it. So I thought, well, I don't really wanna lose that time because I wanted to shoot this video today, but yes, he's usually right and so I did. I soaked it with spray and wash, put it through the wash, took it out of the wash. There was that big, ugly black grease stain, had not budge put it in the dryer and came upstairs to put the red <laughs> trim on. Now, this fabric, this beautiful, wonderful fabric withstood all of that. And I don't know how it did because first of all, when I was ripping those seams out, I was not being exactly gentle. And ripping out surging is no, no fun at all. I tried to remember the trick of just loosening the threads and then pulling the, the loopers out in one fell swoop. That did not work at all. And in fact, when I was trying to pull, I was making the stitching cling even harder. So that was not good. But this fabric withstood everything. And then I attached these little, I don't know, ruffles or wings, whatever you want to call them. I think it has salvaged the dress. I like how the dress turned out. I love this fabric. I can't thank it enough for being so patient with me. And because I was going to make a midi dress, I have some left over. And I'm thinking that a car pillow would be adorable. I also thought, how cute would that be in a nursery for curtains, pillows, crib blankets, crib ruffles, you know, bumpers. Do they still put bumpers in cribs? Absolutely darling. And you know what else? I'm gonna wear this dress for the 4th of July because it's red, white, and blue. So everything ended well. All's well that ends well, but it was quite a trek with this dress. And I have learned my lesson about linings. If you're going to pull anything through shoulder seams, do not sew up the back, do not do that. Um, but there you go. And I am committed to sewing more things with linings because they look really pretty. And I like the fact that the solid poly lining behind this really makes these flowers pop. So I'm going to leave a link to this beautiful voil in the description box. You can hop over to Fabric Mart and pick some up for yourself. Make an airy little top. You can make a dress like I did. You can make accessories, whatever you'd like. This print is crisp and fresh and so cute. And hey, there's one more thing I wanna show you before we go. Hang on. You ready? I got a haircut. So here it is. Here's the new do. It's quite a bit shorter. I like it. It feels good. It feels nice and cool for summer. I'm not too sure how I'm going to style it yet, but um, I went over to the little school. Six dollars haircut. Sweet woman named Olga. She cut my hair and she wasn't even phased because I had probably five inches taken off. And I said, do you mind? And she said, oh no. She goes, most students here don't want to touch hair that that's, that's that long. But she said, we've seen a lot of it because of, yeah, you know. So anyway, I finally got my hair cut and I love it. And I love this fabric and I'll talk with you soon. Bye everybody.